and Phil has uh, admitted that he made a mistake there. And indeed, the Ravens made the right call by turning him into their quarterback of the future and now their quarterback of the present. You follow me? So uh, to answer your question, Rudy, pay attention to Kareem Hunt. If this guy gets it figured out, okay, and he stays out of trouble, learns from his mistakes, you have a good one-two punch in the backfield. You really, really do. As far as a guy, this may be before your time, but I remember many, many, many years ago when the Michigan Wolverines had a guy by the quarterback by the name of Dennis Franklin, who the Lions picked out of the sixth round, a uh, good quarterback for the Wolverines, uh, and they tried to make him a wide receiver. That experiment didn't work out, but again, you're talking about 1970s football, you know, and so just because you have a guy <clears throat> who you think has play playmaking skills outside of the pocket, Rudy, doesn't mean you automatically turn him into a wide receiver. You know what I mean? Sure. And then, and then I'm, I'll am i talk about a situation which I'm not trying to get off topic, Rick. I'm trying to make sure that we're – you see examples. Many years ago, Alonzo Highsmith, I think, was a defensive player, and the Miami Hurricanes turned him into a running back. How did that work out? So, you know, you see certain skill sets, speed, and – you discover them, then you try to build uh, with the strength. So you're talking about a game here, Rudy, that they're separated by 130 miles. Of course, we know one has six Super Bowls, and the other one never been to one to begin with. And, of course, you have a rivalry, which has been so one-sided anyhow. So, you know, you're talking – I don't know. Do you give hatred any reason to think the game should be any closer, even though I expected Cleveland to be further along? And I didn't think that Pittsburgh would be – a total drop off, but do you think that the right records are appropriate at this stage of the season, Rude? I think so. I, I, I think Cleveland uh, offensively, Steelers offensively, both trying to find their spark, trying to find their go-to guys. Between Baker Mayfield, Mason Rudolph, these guys aren't playing the best football. But again, I look at the production and uh, offensively, they're pretty neck and neck from from targets, completions. Both of these guys have been doing rel relatively well. One thing should be noted, Mason Rudolph has a higher QBR than Ben did through his first four starts. So what does that say? That means that the trend for Mason Rudolph, the learning curve for Mason Rudolph may not be as steep, but can also be considered as a guy maybe for the future for the Steelers. Maybe, right. maybe not. However, Ben does come back next season, which allows for him to continue playing on the current contract that he's in, which is one more year. And I think the Steelers would probably be beneficial. As I mean, Look, Kevin Colbert, and I don't think anybody's giving Kevin Colbert any type of uh, a shout-out for what he continues to do, is by putting the right people in the right positions with this team. Acquiring, giving up the first-round pick. I'm sorry, Ryan Clark, but i got to call you out on this one. Ryan Clark stated that, that it was a bad move to use that first-round pick to get Mika Fitzpatrick because there's not going to be a quarterback available in the first round for this team because of that because of that trade. Ryan, you're wrong. Sorry, it is what it is. However, I look at could could the Steelers move up? They did with Devin Bush. And was Devin uh, Bush been nothing but stellar for for the Steelers team? Sideline to sideline guy, knows how to tackle, knows when to get in, knows when to back out. He understands his role and he's becoming even more familiar. He's already had a fumble return to a touchdown. Right. So no one can say that that moving up for the right reasons is going to be reflected in any immediate payoff. But, but first round draft picks between Mika Fitzpatrick and Devin Bush. I mean, they have a loaded, a loaded defense only second to new England. As you had stated earlier, Scott, this is Rudy Reyes and Scott Morgan Roth, motorman, Rude dog at take no punches on Twitter. Give us a follow, show us some love, share, t retweet, tweet, interact. Uh, and soon we'll have a call in number for you guys. So if you want to call in and chat, we can certainly answer your questions as well. Uh, so at Take No Punches, Motorman and Rude Dog here. And one thing I'd, I'd like to state is that the Steelers are trending in the right direction. Things are moving for them offensively. They're getting better offensively. You've seen the chemistry last week between Mason Rudolph and James Washington. They're right. getting it to those playmakers. Who is the key, obviously, other than Mika Fitzpatrick and the aforementioned Devin Bush, that you're going to be looking for defensively for the Steelers, especially in the red zone? I like Watt. I really do. I do. Is it uh, T.J. Watt? Yes, brother. Right. Yep. Yeah. I. I. I well, anytime you have a Watt to me, 
you know, these guys, it's in the blood. These guys are good players. They really are. So that's who I, if I had to, you're going to narrow me down, pin me one, that's one. And by the way, just, you know, folks out there, please follow the South Florida Tribune as well at Tribune South as well. And also my website is www. Three W's South Florida Tribune dot com. We have some great online material from around the country as well as locally. Give our local teams a uh, shout out. Plus, we'd like to publish things from all over the country. But going back to some of your other things, Rudy, let's talk about Watt. You know, you know who the Watt family reminds me of? is the Bulla family out with Michigan State. You know, they have Hank, they have uh, one Bulla after another. You know how some families, Rudy, are synonymous with being with certain universities. That's what I, that's how I liken the Watt family with the University of Wisconsin. So yeah, I like I like the Watt family in in, in general. And what's really interesting when the Steelers are taking on the Chargers, you see the mom Mama Watt wearing this uh, half jersey Steeler Charger jersey, and the back of it it said Mom. And, and I, I think I think it's really interesting because you have parents that have players on both sides on, on both teams. And you're trying to find a way to not root for one versus rooting for the other. And I think that's probably right. split right down the middle is the way to go because they're both your, they're both your kids. TJ right. Watt finds a way to go underneath larger defenders who are bigger than him uh, up top, but he has that power move. And and so he makes you think you're going, he's going one way when he doesn't, he goes the opposite direction, gets underneath your arms as a taller guard or, or, or tackle that enables him to get inside to be able to create those sacks, being the Cossack leader on the Steelers' defensive line. I like Rudy. where T.J. Watt is going. Could he be, the, uh, you know, the the N NFL Defensive Player of the Year? That remains to be seen. But he's certainly in that conversation. Of course, everybody needs to go out and get their Pro Bowl vote. Of course, I'm I'm voting for 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 T.J. Watt. I'm voting for Mika Fitzpatrick, uh, right. and and probably even Mason Rudolph if he continues this, this type of production. Rudy, I want to back your point about something, okay? Number one, just because you give up a stupid first-round pick doesn't mean you're not going to find good franchise quarterbacks later on in the draft, bro. You're just not going to do that. I mean, Jacksonville's got one with Gardner Minshew, the second. He'll ultimately be the starting quarterback there, Rudy. I mean, come on. We could come up with a list of 20 quarterbacks, not in the first round. And you know what? The Steelers front office, Rudy, they get it. They really get it, okay? You think they're going to make out there and make some stupid moves? Every front office does, but not. But some of them do it more often than others. So if you have an opportunity to get an impact player during the middle of the year and don't have to wait until free agency, Rudy, you do it. I mean, really, remember this, Rudy, and I've covered a lot of drafts in my lifetime. A draft choice is nothing more, Rudy, okay, Rude Dog, is nothing more than a prospect. Let me tell you right now what, how to spell prospect, okay, folks? P-R-O-S-P-E-C-T, prospect. You're not guaranteed that this guy's going to work out. How many times have you ever heard the word bust? No, we're not talking about the word bust in Canton, Ohio. We're talking about bust. They don't work out. So you can find your quarterback, and they don't need it. You made reference that moment, Mason Rudolph. Is that Oklahoma State and Baker Mayfield, Oklahoma? So, yeah, I guess that adds a little intrigue to the folks, our fans out in Oklahoma, that you have a little uh, matchup here in the pros with two uh, young quarterbacks on a large national stage. You know what I mean? So you can find good quarterbacks anywhere. You make the best trade that you can that betters your organization. But I'm going to tell you, when you go to Pittsburgh, Joe Hayden, uh, who ironically played for the Browns, found a home there in Pittsburgh, didn't he, Rudy? No, oh, yeah, he definitely right? did. He, he's right. been the impact so he player. Mm -hmm. Right, so he did. He finds a home. Make a pat There's a certain thing about the Steelers organization called stability. Okay, people want to go play for stable organizations, so all they have to do is play football, okay, and get paid. Not a bad life if you can get it, okay, but you want to make sure that you surround yourself with a good system, good coaches, strong front office, and things work themselves out. Is it easier said than done? Of course, Rude Dog, you know it as well as I do. But Joe Hayden's a good player. Doesn't get any publicity, but they know about him in Pittsburgh, right? Mika Fitzpatrick, whoever thought. There's no palm trees in Pittsburgh, but the steel industry works. And I think that we don't know whether it'll be a steal for the Dolphins or a steal for the, uh, for the Steelers, okay? 
But you get, you know where I'm going with this, right, Rudy? Well, yeah, absolutely. It, it, just because you're not a first-round talent doesn't mean you're truly not a first-round talent. Lots of teams right. in the NFL have taken guys. I, I'll, I'll give you a good example. Terry Bradshaw, not picked one overall. Horrible combine. Horrible. Absolutely horrific combine. Um, uh, Troy Aikman had more interceptions than he had completions in his first year as an NFL rookie. Look, the bottom line is you you can find guys in the lower parts of the draft that are still athletically gifted. Look at look at where Mason Rudolph landed. He wasn't a first overall draft pick. Should he right. have been? Maybe, maybe not. The jury's still out on that. But more importantly, you can find solid talent outside of the first round. And it's shown year in and year out. E- even Division Two guys, even guys that came over from this busted um this busted football you know league that that decided to let everybody know at the last possible minute that all these guys are not going to be paid and they just find themselves somewhere else but of course a lot of these guys are finding themselves in the nfl uh, right. uh kyle allen who plays for the carolina panthers who's taking place in right. cam noon down there in carolina he's the guy who's been winning for this team is cam on the training right. block absolutely is cam a first round talent Maybe not this year, but every year prior, he's shown glimpses of what he can do offensively inside the pocket, outside of the pocket. First-round pick from Auburn? Yeah, absolutely. But Kyle Allen, not. Not a guy of first-round talent. But yet, he keeps winning for this team. So, other teams with the nucleus of, of mentalities and attitudes, we're talking about OBJ, even, even guys like Antonio Brown. Maybe he'll find a way back in the NFL. Colin Kaepernick will also find his way back into the NFL at some point, unless this is right. some type of PR charade. Uh, the mm-hmm. NFL is, is refusing to, to reveal where this is going to take place, and uh, not not every team in the NFL is going to be there. Don't forget, players uh, are going to be traveling to their destination, but coaches and scouts and things of that nature. I know at least five teams right now, and it could be six, that are going to watch okay. Colin Kaepernick perform. Is Colin okay. Kaepernick a first-round draft pick? You, well, he showed it, been to the Super Bowl, been a Pro Bowl. So, yeah, he could be, but whether or not he's a first-round Talent headed into any given, whether it's the XFL, which is coming next year, uh, whether it gets another shot in the NFL. Nobody knows. The jury's still on it. But the bottom line is you have all these first-round talents that seem to be busting, yet the backup guys who didn't, who weren't first-round draft picks are now having an opportunity, and they're taking advantage of it by winning, and winning cures all wounds. Well, remember a couple things, Rudy, okay? When Matt Stafford came into the league, got a $40 million signing bonus, and William Clay Ford wasn't used to paying that people that kind of money. And if that wasn't good enough, Sam Bradford got $50 million, okay? And obviously, uh, it turns out Stafford's had a much better career. But what you're talking about is nowadays you have a rookie wage skill, so a lot of these guys are slotted in, so to speak, about where they're going to get, where they're drafted. So, you know, they can feed their family on their rookie contract, Rudy, but that second contract is what you're really playing for. And you know what? Nowadays, you know, for me, that's what you better be hoping for, that you're able to get to that second contract. And, and if you get beat up badly and whether you're holding the clipboard or not, it's it's very few guys are very humble is what they are. But they got to start being. And NFL owners are getting smarter and smarter that, you know, depending on the position, what they need, they continue to adapt and how they fill out their rosters. Now, you were talking about Colin Kaepernick. So I kind of wonder about it, and I've thought about that overnight, and now I'm glad you brought it up. I think I'm wondering that there's so many bad quarterbacks out there, and now that the collusion lawsuit is settled a little bit, how many teams are really going to take a crack at him? What kind of physical shape is he in mentally? Is he going to play the kneel-down game, or is he going to finally realize that humble pie takes horrible? You know what I mean? So as a result, you know, you're right. There could be five or six teams looking at him. Or is he getting an audition for 2020? That, that'll be something that I would like to do next week is talk about that on our program to, to see how it all plays out, if indeed it is a PR stunt or if it's something really legitimate. But I'm glad you brought it up, though, Rudy. Well, I, I think everybody needs to, to, to be aware that this isn't a guy who committed atrocities. He didn't end up in jail or prison or any other type of thing uh no no domestic violence like we've seen in ray rice none of the things have been talked about when it comes to antonio right. Brown. so you you can put those things aside this guy just kneeled on an nfl field that's it he didn't hurt anybody right. he didn't damage anything he didn't cause video to be recorded of his 
of his uh, negative activities, things like that. He just kneeled. That That's all he did. And so blackballed by some NFL teams, not by others. And the ones that weren't blackballed, uh, that, that didn't blackball him, are the ones that are going to be there to show up at this Saturday right. event. And I think, well, you know, could, could he – is he deserving of another opportunity? The jury's still out on it. I think that this is not a PR stunt. 